In podcast number three, we are going to focus on the structure of eukaryotic chromosomes. So why are we going to talk about eukaryotic chromosomes? Well, first of all, they're going to play a central role in eukaryotic cell division. And eukaryotic cell division has two steps. All right, step number one is going to be mitosis. Mitosis is the process of making sure that each of the daughter cells will get a complete and functional nucleus. It's that nucleus that separates eukaryotic cells apart. Now remember, U means true. And true cells have a nucleus. So I just want to make sure we got that covered because you got to remember that. All right, now, to make sure that each daughter cell receives a complete nucleus, you have to go through four phases. And this is known as PMAT. And we're going to go over these in complete de details in a, a forthcoming podcast. All right, now, so once you've made sure that you've created two nuclei and you've separated them, then you need to go through a process called cell division. And basically what cell division is, it's fission or splitting in two for a eukaryotic cell. So this is division of the cytoplasm. The, the, during cytokinesis, the cell will actually split into two daughter cells. All right, so let's go. What is a chromosome? A chromosome is a condensed chain of DNA. So think of it as coiled up chromatin. Now, the cell's DNA, which is called the genome, G-E-N-O-M-E, -E, the genome, is typically divided up into several chromosomes. For example, in humans, there's three billion base pairs that make up the DNA. So imagine you have a ladder with three billion steps. You need to chop that into smaller pieces to make it easier to carry around. And in our case, we chop it up into 46 different pieces or 46 different chromosomes. Now, as you can see in this chart, the number of chromosomes is going to vary from organism to organism. Now, do not be confused with the number of chromosomes being equivalent to the amount of DNA. For example, here's Homo sapiens, which is 46 chromosomes. All right? Compare that to a potato, which has 48. Now, which organism do you think has more DNA? Obviously, it's going to be the human. So why does this guy have 48 chromosomes? It's because they've chopped it up into smaller pieces, and they have two more. Now, look at the family dog. 78 chromosomes. Now, dogs and humans are both mammals. They're going to have approximately the same amount of DNA. They just chop theirs up into more pieces. All right? 78 for them, 46 for us. All right? All right, now we've seen this picture again in Chapter 12, when we looked over chromosome structure, so this is just a little bit of review. Remember a histone down here? That's a protein. And if you take eight, pro, eight histones, let me get caught up here. So that's eight histones. And then you have two loops of DNA. You put this thing together. That's a nucleosome, which is often referred to as the beads on a string. All right Now, these nucleosomes are going to coil up into something creatively called a coil. Your coils are going to turn into supercoils, and then your supercoils are going to just pretty much wad themselves up into a ball. And here you're going to get a chromosome. Now, you see this chromosome that's in this X shape? This is often referred to as a replicated chromosome. Whoops, misspelled replicated. Because like here's these this side of the chromosome and that side of the chromosome, they're exact copies of each other. All right. You also find this picture in your book in chapter 10. All right. So more about chromosome structure. Remember, it has a X shape. Each side of the X is called a sister chromatid. So this side is a chromatid, and that side is a chromatid. Now, these chromatids are held together by a centromere. Okay, so I want you to remember, centro refers to center. So this thing's going to be in the center. So it'll be this spot about right in there. All right, now, this centromere is essentially protein Velcro. It holds these two chromatids together. All right, the next thing we have are kinetochores, and these are these light blue discs here on the outside. Now, kinetochores are very important. This is where 
the spindle fibers are going to attach. So these guys right here are spindle fibers. Now these spindle fibers are made out of microtubules. Okay, so here's a great way to remember. Centromere is to the inside and kinetochores are on the outside. Now remember how you spell it here, kineto chore. Remember you do your chores outside. So the kinetochore to the outside, centromere to the inside. Okay? Sister chromatids, they are exact copies of each other. All right, now make sure you study this diagram. This will show up on some of your worksheets. It's also going to show up on quiz and test. Not like I'm giving any way any hints. So put a little star next to that. All right. Now, chromosome structure is very confusing because you have chromatin, chromatids, chromosomes. They're all made out of the same stuff. That's why they sound the same. They just get different names at different types. All right, so remember, chromatin is long and thin. Think of a long piece of yarn. And when you coil it up into a ball, that's a chromosome. All right, the next thing is chromosomes are made up of chromatids. And remember, chromatids are made up of chromatin. Remember, they're all the same stuff. Now, when the chromatids separate during mitosis, you have to call them chromosomes again. Remember this confusing part? I wasn't lying. Now, just remember, they're all made of the same stuff. They just get a different name at a different time. All right, so let's label this diagram over here. Now, I like this diagram because all the pieces look the same because they're essentially the same. All right, this is a chromosome. And I don't like to write the word chromosome, so I invented a picture of a chromosome. Basically, one chromatid, another chromatid, and then a kinetochore. So there's your chromosome. Now, this chromosome goes through duplication. And remember, when we say duplication, that means it went through DNA replication. So now you have two sister chromatids. Now, you see that thing with the, with the red dot I just put right there? That's the centromere. That is the uh, protein Velcro. Whoops, that's an M. That's the protein Velcro that holds this guy together. All right, let's fix that. Okay, let's spell this correctly. C-E-N-T-R-O-M-E-R-E. -E -E. Centromere right there. All right, now the moment the centromere separates and one sister chromatid goes this way and the other sister chromatid goes that way, you can't call them chromatids anymore. They're called chromosomes. Now, if you notice, is there really any difference between this shape, that shape, and that shape? No, because they're all the same stuff. They just get a different name at a different time. It's just confusing. You need to go over this stuff time and time again so that you know when it's a chromosome, a chromatid, and a chromosome again. All right, this will conclude podcast number three.